oh, I don't care about the money thing. It's just, as long as it happens, it happens. It's kind of very laissez-faire attitude about it. A lot of that uh, middle-class mindset that we are taught, it's almost exclusively on saving money, but not on investing money. The truth is, if you want to be wealthy one day and you want to build generational wealth, then it's something that you have to focus on and it's something that you have to be intentional about. <laughs> Hey, Courtney Sanders here. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to me, I'm a full-time online life and business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things, but I do it because I'm passionate about helping you turn your success story into a six or even seven figure online coaching brand. And I know with that, a lot of people are interested in creating online coaching brands. I know I certainly was because they want to create financial freedom for themselves. I am such a proponent of an online coaching business because it's one of the few businesses that you don't need a whole lot of over ahead to get started, right? I know there's investing in software and you know other coaches and mentors and courses, programs, etc. but trust me, that is chump change compared to what some people are investing in in order to get their businesses off the ground. I think about a restaurant who needs to open, right? There's you know the lease or the building space, there is uh, all the staff that they need to hire, there's all the equipment and all the food and there's a lot that even in something as simple as a restaurant we need to invest in in order to get off the ground. And so isn't it great that we essentially get to take our life experiences, our success stories, our knowledge, and package them up into a coaching business that can help create generational wealth for ourselves and for our family. And so with that, I thought it'd be fun to do a video about the five signs that you are going to be wealthy one day. And I'm like, man, if somebody would have made this video for me, even as far as six, seven years ago when I was really busting my hump, right? Trying to build this business on the side while I was working my nine to five job. Uh, sometimes you need that encouragement of like, wow, am I on the right track? Is this really gonna happen? Is all the work that I'm putting in, is it going to pay off for myself? So if you are in the throes of building your business, you wanna create financial freedom and generational wealth for you and your family, and you're like, is it ever gonna happen? Am I on the right track? If you can see yourself in these five signs, there's a good sign that you are on the right track. And so with that, let's get into it. All right, the first sign that you're gonna be wealthy one day is that you're actually focused on being wealthy. I know that sounds crazy, but there's this kind of weird thing in our society where people know that money is important and they know that it's something that they need to pay attention to, that they need to get financial literacy around, but nobody wants to admit, you know, that they're focused on it. And so it's like this, oh, I don't care about the money thing. It's just, as long as it happens, it happens. It's kind of very laissez-faire attitude about it. But the truth is, if you want to be wealthy one day and you want to build generational wealth, then it's something that you have to focus on and it's something that you have to be intentional about. And so if you are intentional about it right now, that alone sets you apart from 99% of the people who would love to be wealthy but are not doing the things in order to make it happen. And in fact, this reminds me of one of my favorite books. It's a bit of an older book, but it's really good. And it's called The Secrets of Six Figure Women by Barbara Stanny. And in this book, she documents the mindset of six figure women and even some seven figure women and the mindset of who she documents as chronic under earner. So these were women who had a level of education and experience that would seem to warrant them making more money in their careers, but for whatever reason, and they never could seem to make more money, even though everything else around them says that they should be making more. And one of the key differences that she noticed between the two groups of women is that the chronic under earners would say things like, oh, I don't care about the money or money is not that important to me or whatever. And so they wouldn't focus on the money at all. They wouldn't negotiate for themselves at work. They wouldn't put any focus or attention into their finances and lo and behold, they weren't making much money. But when she talked to the six and seven figure earners, they were like, money is not the most important thing to me. So that's why I focus on it heavily in my career. They were like, that's why I demand what I worth, why I'm always going after promotions, why I make sure my financial life is in order precisely so I don't have to worry about it and so I don't have to spend all of my time focused on it. So they were intentional about it in the beginning so they don't have to be focused on it later. And I think that that's definitely reflected in my story and what I've seen with other people who are well on their way to building wealth. So if you are focused on building wealth, if you are intentional about it, then that alone is a good sign that one day you will achieve it. All right, the second sign that you are on your way to becoming wealthy is that you are willing to go against the grain. And I say this because so much of what we are taught in society is not designed for you to create generational wealth. It's designed for you to maintain a middle-class lifestyle. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you aspire to and that's totally a fine thing. You know, some people are like, all this money talk, I don't really care about it. I just wanna, you know, work a job that allows me to pay enough to pay my bills and I wanna enjoy my free time on the weekend and I just, that's all I wanna do. I don't think there's 
there's anything wrong with that. But if you're watching this video that tells me that building generational wealth and going beyond that is something that is important to you. And so if it is important to you, understand that you're actually in the minority of people and that you're gonna have to go against the grain. And on top of that, in order to build generational wealth, you are going to have to navigate a different type of financial literacy that is almost opposite of what we are commonly taught growing up or again, what is commonly shared with the middle class. And so if you are not willing to go against the grain, if you are not willing for your friends and family to question you and say, well, why are you doing that? Well, that seems kind of crazy. Well, shouldn't you just, you know, get your good job and whatever, mind your business and invest in your 401k and call it a day, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna look nuts to people until they start to see this pay off. So if you're not willing to go against the grain, it might be a little difficult for you to build wealth, but if you are willing to go against the grain, if you're willing to learn from mentors who are where you wanna be and who have achieved the things you wanna achieve in the way you want to achieve them, understand that they are probably going to guide you to do things that look different than what 99% of people do with their money. But as long as you are willing to stand out, to kind of be a lone duck, at least for a time, then there's a good chance that you are well on your way to becoming wealthy. Going along with that willingness to go against the grain, the third sign that you are on your way to becoming wealthy is if you focus on making money, not just saving money. And so this is kind of what I was talking about in terms of a lot of that uh, middle-class mindset that we are taught. It's almost exclusively on saving money, but not on investing money. So keeping the money that we have, but not on making the money grow. And this is done in part because I think the powers that be, right, who think about the financial literacy um, education that is provided to the public at large, they understand that in a very real sense, Though you may be middle class and that you know you certainly have more than someone who is impoverished, there is a level of low grade insecurity all the time in the minds of most middle class people because it's like, oh my goodness, I could lose my job and I could lose everything. Oftentimes your bills are right up to the amount that you're bringing in. There's very little wiggle room, very little margin. And so there's all this stress on, oh my goodness, how do we keep the little bit of money that we have left over every month because everything else in our lives is taking that up. Our car notes, our mortgages, food costs are going up, inflation, et cetera, et cetera, and wages are not rising with it. And so you have this, you know, decreasing level of margin. And so you'll find that most of the financial literacy education is all around saving money, keeping a budget, clipping coupons. How do we reduce your lifestyle so that you can hold on to the little left that you have? And while there's nothing wrong with that, and I think that's a great start when it comes to managing your money, I certainly recommend that someone would be on a budget versus not be on a budget, um, or certainly clip coupons to save on groceries rather rather than not do that, understand that if that's all you do, you're never going to be able to achieve wealth because wealth really is about the multiplication of money. And so saving money is kind of like the baseline. It gets you on the game board. But once you have some money saved, you gotta start thinking about how you can invest that money ultimately in order to achieve wealth, whether that's investing in a business, which is what I did first. And then I use the uh, profits and the revenue generated from that business to invest in both the stock market and in real estate, which is then creating its own income. And then and that income that it puts off, I can then reinvest into something else. And so hopefully you see how this multiplication effect happens. So you have to be willing on focused on making money, particularly multiplying money, not just saving it if you desire to be wealthy. All right, I have a lot more where that came from, but first I wanna hear from you. Why are you working to become wealthy? Share in the comments below. All right, the fourth sign that you are well on your way to being wealthy and really that you are well on your way to being successful in general is that you focus on the bricks and not the building, right? And so what I mean by this is oftentimes we have very, very big goals and we're so excited by the big goals that we want to achieve, we become obsessed with those big goals and we really mess over the day to day, right? So all we have in each moment is the moment, right? We have today, we have the things that are on our to-do to list right now. And so oftentimes people waste their days, they waste their time, they waste their hours, and they think it's okay because they're like, well, it doesn't matter anyway, I'm focused on my big goal, and as long as I catch up and you know do what needs to be done, I can achieve that big goal. What they don't realize is that it's the bricks that stack up ultimately to build the building. And so if you have too many bricks that are either missing or are cracked or are out of order or are not placed where they're supposed to be, one, you're not even gonna be able to 
to build that building, but if you build that building, it's not going to stand. And so understand that wealth in its totality is like building a building, but you only get the building if you are willing to build it brick by brick. So you gotta focus on what those bricks are in your finances and make sure that you get them straight and that you lay another brick on top of it. So as I mentioned in the previous example, your first brick might be saving money or getting your budget under control, or if you're an overspender, getting that together. But after that's done, you need to start laying new bricks on top of that. For me, it was learning how to monetize my skill set in order to build a business because I knew once I was able to build a successful business, I was going to be able to wait, make way more in my business than I was going to be able to make working a nine to five job. And that was going to accelerate my wealth building process. So the first budget was kind of getting my uh, spending and saving together. And then the next brick was investing in myself. And then it was investing in my business. And then there's all these bricks that I have built in my business that, that is now allowing me to generate a level of cash flow where I can now invest in other things like the stock market, real estate, et cetera. And I am building those things on, on top of each other. And so over time, I mean, who knows where I'll be a decade from now, hopefully we're even further than I am right now, but wherever I am at that time, it will only be because of what I did in these individual moments. So make sure that every day you are focused on making some level of progress towards your goals. And if you're not sure how to break your goals down, you can check out this video here where I talk all about how to set goals like a millionaire and I give you my process for specifically how to break those things down and how to make it tangible so that you actually make progress. All right, the fifth sign that you are well on your way to becoming wealthy, and this is gonna sound kind of crazy, especially after everything else that I said, but as if you don't let money control you. I know. Most people are controlled by money and people think that that's only like a rich person problem. Like, oh, they're greedy and everything that they do is about money. A lot of people don't realize that middle-class people can be controlled by money, poor people can be controlled by money. Being controlled by money is if you only make decisions based on the financial situation. And so you have to be willing to do this even when you are not in the financial situation that you want to be, because when you have that level of personal freedom, a personal fortitude, when you're saying, you know what, I know my finances look like X, Y, Z, but I am not gonna let that dictate how I achieve my goals or what my life experiences are, you then rise yourself, you become better and bigger than money and the money no longer controls you and you become in the position to finally control and master your money. And this was a big key for me, even when I was a broke college student, even when I had my first um, job after school and I was thinking about different things. I tell people this all the time, you know, I've always been living my best life, right? I didn't wait until I had a certain amount of money where I could live a great life. You know, the, whatever, the way I wanted to dress, I would shop at the thrift stores. I was like, I'm gonna be cute anyway. I'm gonna find this stuff. Let me go to the rich people areas and go to the Salvation Armies and find really great things, um, different restaurants that I couldn't afford to eat at. I would go um, during their restaurant weeks and I would take a Groupon with me and then I would eat lunch and not the full dinner, but I still made sure that I had those experiences, super high-end expensive hotels that I eventually wanted to stay in. I couldn't even afford to stay one night in those hotels, but I could afford to go get coffee and then work in the lobby on a Saturday or on my lunch break and really take in those experiences. So those are just some simple ways of not letting money control you and not letting it dictate the kind of life that you want to live and the type of experiences that you want to do. But even beyond that not letting money dictate, you know, what you want out of life, right? For me, you know, I was rising up in my career. Um, I was under 30. I think I was 27 at the time when I quit my job and I was bumping up against a six figure salary and I had, you know, a 10% 401k match and I had all of these amazing things. The money was good, but I did not let that dictate ultimately what I wanted to do with my life and what I felt my purpose was. And so at the time, financially, it might have seemed like a smarter decision for me to stay where I was, but I was was like I was already in the position of not letting money control me, of deciding what I wanted to do and then making my life orient to that, not the other way around. And so it was an easy decision when I said, you know what, I'm, I'm leaving, I wanna strike out and do my own thing. I didn't have any fear around that because I was already used to living a life where I didn't let money control me. And so I know that sounds counterintuitive with all this talk about, you know, how you have to pay attention to the money and it is important even if it's not the most important thing, but part of how you show to yourself and to your subconscious mind that it's not the most important thing is by making decisions not because of the money, but because it's the right thing to do and it's the purpose thing to do. So don't let money control you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you're gonna love my financial freedom workshop. This is a recording that I did not too long ago where I talk about the money mindset you need to have in order to achieve financial freedom. So if you want access to that right away, click the link below to get it for free. 
All right, thanks so much for watching this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want even more where this came from, make sure you're subscribed to my podcast, The Courtney Sanders Show. And if you can't wait till my next podcast episode or my next video, make sure that you are following me on Instagram. It's Courtney L. Sanders. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.